Hello everyone and welcome to the Guna Factory. So Arsenal and Liverpool combined 11. I will tell you factually what players get in. Also the Super League is back. What does this mean? So I'll also touch on that a little bit later. So let's get into it. So we're going to get straight into this combined 11 and I've seen a few people do these and to be honest they're all very biased. If it's a Liverpool fan it's always very Liverpool heavy. If it's an Arsenal fan it's always Arsenal heavy. So I will give you the final draft. This is what the final 11 actually looks like. Okay, so we're going to get straight into it. In goal, Alisson. Easy. The best goalkeeper in the world. He has been for a number of seasons. Raya, good keeper. Ramsdale, in my opinion, a better keeper. But still, there is no debate from me in terms of who gets into that goalkeeping position. Alisson all day. And then we go on to left back. Arsenal at the minute have Zinchenko. Liverpool have Andy Robertson, who in my opinion, when fit and firing, is a world-class left back. So again, that's two Liverpool players. Andy Robertson gets in. So centre-backs. I'm going to do a centre-back pairing. I don't think you can split the centre-backs up. It needs to be a centre-back pairing. Van Dijk, world-class. Canate, rubbish. Saliba, world-class. Gabriel, very, very good, right? So it's Arsenal centre-back. You look at the table. You look at the goals conceded. Arsenal, joint lowest. And in my opinion, they're better. More longevity. Younger age profile. So them two for me get in. Gabriel and Saliba. And then right back, you've got Trent or Ben White. So it just depends what kind of fullback you're going to want on that side. For me, because of the attacking players we have, I'm going for a more defensive fullback. So I'm going to pick Ben White. I fully understand why people would say Trent. He can at times be brilliant. Very vulnerable at the back. But going forward, his delivery, his accuracy is passing unbelievable. So for me, Ben White gets into that right back position. And then centre defensive midfield. Look, if I'm being really biased, I would put Partey there and then have Rice and Odegaard. But I'm not going to do that only because Partey's injured at the minute. So I'm going to be fair. I'm going to put Declan Rice in that CDM position because he has played there a lot. And I'm actually going to put Alexis McAllister in that number eight position. I think he's a very good player. His attacking play is really good. I really like watching Alexis McAllister play. And then in the number 10 position, you've got either Odegaard or Sabozlai. Liverpool fans are raving about how good Sabozlai is. I've seen him a few times. Seems a good player. But to put him on the level of Odegaard would be incorrect. Factually incorrect. He's nowhere near Odegaard's level. In fact, Odegaard is one of the best centre attacking midfielders in the world. No one can debate that. He's shown it for the last couple of seasons. So Martin Odegaard is in that number 10 position. And this leaves you to the attack him free. Now, a lot of Arsenal fans are putting Saka at right wing. So do I agree? No, you can't put Saka in at right wing yet. You've got Mo Salah, the best right winger. He's been the best right winger for probably five or six seasons. This guy is unbelievable. Severely underrated. And even people that rate him, I still think he's underrated because his numbers are incredible for a right winger. He is truly one of the best players the Premier League has ever seen, undoubtedly. So right wing, Mo Salah. And then that leads you on to left wing, Luis Diaz versus Gabriel Martinelli. Now, a lot of the Liverpool fans are putting Luis Diaz, and this is the one where I think they're being very, very deluded because you've only got to look at their stats, and it will tell you Gabriel Martinelli is a far superior player. So listen to this, right? So Luis Diaz in three seasons, 51 games in the Prem and FA Cup, 11 goals. Last season alone, Gabriel Martinelli scored 15 goals just in the league. So that puts to bed any of the claims that Luis Diaz is a better player, has better output. I don't know what these fans are talking about. Gabriel Martinelli gets into the combined 11 over Luis Diaz by a mile. And then that leads you on to striker. You've got Darwin Nunes versus Gabriel Jesus. And again, Liverpool players always want to use stats and goals with Mo Salah when they're comparing him to, to Saka. So I'm going to do the same with Jesus. And Jesus wins. Darwin Nunes in two season, 14 goals in 45 games in the Prem. Gabriel Jesus, 18 goals in 38 games in the Prem. So way more goals in way less games. He's a better player, better output once again. Gabriel Jesus is the striker in this combined 11. And that leads you on to the managers. Klopp versus Arteta. Now for me, this one isn't very difficult. You've got Mikel Arteta, who is a brilliant upcoming coach. He's done brilliant with Arsenal. The emotion, passion, and all in all, the atmosphere he's brought to Arsenal has been incredible. But this is Jurgen Klopp we're talking about. This genuinely is one of the best managers in the world. He has a track record. He's won the Champions League. He's won the Premier League. So you can't put Arteta above Klopp now due to what you think he might do in the future. At the minute, Jurgen Klopp is the better manager. So Jurgen Klopp is going to be managing this combined 11. So what are the scores? That leaves us with four Liverpool players and seven Arsenal players. And I honestly think that's a fair representation of where these two teams are at at the minute. I think even an honest Liverpool fan will tell you this Arsenal team 
is better at the minute. You know, Liverpool are going through a structural rebuild. They've brought in a lot of new players. They're not the team they was. And this Arsenal team's flying at the minute. They're genuine title contenders. They genuinely have the ability to go a long way in the Champions League. So I think that is definitely an unbiased combined 11 with Liverpool and Arsenal players. Let me know your thoughts. So just very quickly, before I go, I'm going to touch on this Super League story. I don't really want to, but unfortunately, it just seems to be a stain that's not going away. So Arsenal released a statement this morning, and it says... Arsenal Football Club notes the judgment by the European Court of Justice and our position in relation to the European Super League has not changed. We will continue to play in UEFA competitions and continue to work with fellow European clubs and the European Club Association. What do I think of that? I think that's rubbish. They haven't come out and point blank denied joining the Super League like a lot of other top teams around Europe have done. They've basically left the door open. It doesn't say anything about not wanting to participate in the Super League in that statement. All it says is they will continue to play UEFA club competitions. So I'm guessing their thought is, yeah, we'll play UEFA club competitions, we'll play the Super League, and then we'll play the Premier League. But look, they've come out and made a statement. You've got to commend them for that. I'm not going to go too hard on anyone because maybe we will hear more or maybe there will be another statement in the next 24, 48 hours. But to me at the minute, that statement doesn't seem strong enough condemning the Super League. But let me know your thoughts on everything you've heard on this video. What do you think of that combined 11? What changes would you make? Thanks so much to everyone for watching and listening. Hit the like and subscribe button just quick. It will help me out and I'll speak to you all in tomorrow's video. Gooners, have a good day.